Put it right below. Oh, it's ever heavy. <laughs> oh, oh, I heard Debbie Woo. Okay. Okay, I think I'm ready. Let's get started. Uh, remember to go back to your that voting thing for confusion and such. So we can track you and continue to do our experiment. So turn your phones back on. As far as flowchart, oh yes. Here's what's happening here. Uh, we're going to do this bottom part here in the KF. And just to clarify one more time, fractional precipitation, usually it would be pretty rare to use an ice table. You're going to use a KSP expression. For ice, you might want to write this in. Uh, for ice and the will it precipitate, uh, you're going to use Q. And sometimes you'll use the ice like we did today if they ask you for equilibrium concentrations. So sometimes you'll need the ice there. It just depends what the question is. If they ask you for equilibrium concentrations, you do. If not, uh, for will it precipitate problem, you just need Q. Okay, so we're going on to solubility right now. This is section 7. Uh, solubility and pH, page 105 of the reader of the textbook. If you have that, that's page 748. Solubility and pH. What happens is that pH uh, ends up affecting solubility because it causes equilibrium to shift uh, by either adding or removing a component. Typically, by removing a component, it causes a shift to the right. So let me show you an example. Let's say we have magnesium hydroxide. Uh, this, is, this is a solid. goes to magnesium 2 plus aqueous plus... Uh, to hydroxide aqueous. What happens is if I uh, lower the pH, so this is a very insoluble uh, object or species. It's not soluble. It stays as a solid. It wants to stay on the left-hand side. To make this more soluble, I can lower the pH, and lowering the pH does what to the H3O plus concentration? Up or down? Okay. Yeah, pH goes down, H3O plus goes up, and what would this want to react with? Yeah, it wants to react with that one right there, because an acid likes a base. OH minus is a base, acids like base, and what's going to happen is that hydroxide uh, is removed, and then the shift is going to happen to the right. So because hydroxide is removed, this shifts to the right and becomes more soluble or more aqueous over time. And all that I did was decrease the pH. Okay? Decreasing the pH causes it to react with one of the products, and then it goes forward. Uh, let's try another uh, example. So let's say Ag3PO4 solid. This is not very aqueous again. There's it wants to stay a solid and not go to the right. But if, like before, I add an acid, remember that means lowering the pH, just like above, the acid will react with that one right there. That's basic. It's from the... Uh, it's the anion of phosphoric acid, H3PO4. So it reacts with the base, and then it removes it, and that causes a shift to the right. So PO43 minus is removed, 
It shifts to the right, it becomes more soluble. So again, lowering the pH or adding acid causes a shift to the right. Let's try one more. AgCl solid goes to Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. What happens now if I add an acid or lower the pH? Same thing. Add acid, lower the pH. What, does this react with Cl minus? It's, what is Cl minus? It's a conjugate of HCl. And so what is this, acid, base, or neutral? It's neutral. So a neutral won't react with an acid. In this case, uh, nothing happens. Because that anion is not a base. So there's no shift. In this situation, nothing will occur. So you need a couple things in play for the pH to affect solubility. If, it's, if you have Mx as the solid, then X minus must be basic. If basic, then uh, lowering the pH will uh, increase solubility. I'll say that again. If we have whatever solid, M2 thinks, the anion, X, must be basic. If it is basic, then this will work. You can lower the pH, and that will increase the solubility. The reason is that lowering the pH adds an acid. The acid will react with the base, the anion, and cause the reaction to shift to the right. Okay, so that's the concept behind it. Yeah. Why did the AG plus? Uh, the AG plus doesn't affect the solubility as far as lowering the pH, but it will affect it in an upcoming chapter when I see pH in a different topic. So yes, it will, but not not yet. Not for this, not for this concept. Okay, let's try this uh, problem right here. Most important for these problems are the setup. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set it up. Uh, especially, we might solve it too, but I at least want you to know how to set it up. This, this was a funny. I've been doing this problem for a long time, and one year. Somebody kind of in the middle in this room, middle back, stood up, and it was like 1 p.m. Yelled, it's too hot, which I can understand, it was hot. Yelled it really loud, and then walked out of the class. <laughs> <laughs> and then people were kind of freaked out, so I tried to help people. I pleaded with him. I said, I think it's warmer outside, there's air conditioning in here, whatever, and he just left. And so then uh, I had to calm down the class, and I said, well, some, he said it's too hot because sometimes when I'm teaching, I reverberate so much hotness that people don't understand it. But then, after class, people came up to me and said, oh, he didn't say it's too hot. He said it's too hard. And so, <laughs> it was too hard. Yeah, people want to leave right now. Okay, there's the first reaction for magnesium hydroxide. I'm adding here, notice I'm adding NH4 plus. Okay? Is that an acid or a base? That's an acid, so that'll react with our base here. Do you see how that works? That'll react with that, it'll take it away, causing the first reaction to shift to the right, just like we said. And now, NH3 plus H2O. Okay. I hope that kind of makes sense. So the acid here that I just added 
I ignored CL. Why is that? It's neutral spectator ion. So NH4 plus, that's an acid that reacts with this base. So I rewrote the base down here. It's actually going to cause the top reaction to shift to the right and be more soluble. Because I'm adding an acid where there is an anion that's a base. Okay. Do you recognize this reaction? What K? What is the K for this second reaction? It's, do you see the reverse reaction is KB? Base plus water. Okay, so this is 1 over KB. Does that make sense? It's KB. The reverse reaction is KB. Whenever we flip the reaction, we flip K. I know, this is the weirdest part. It's the toughest part. Okay, so uh, there's one more thing though. Let's get out a different color. Do you see that there's two OHs here? Better have two here because I want to react with both of them. So that means everything here is two. Why again? There's two here. There's two in the first reaction, so I better have two OHs in the second reaction. Now my multiplying by two, what happened? I have to square the whole unit. So not multiplying, but squaring because we're talking about K, not delta H. So now I'm going to add these up and write an overall reaction right now. Got magnesium hydroxide, that's a solid. I've got the other reactants are 2NH4 plus, that's aqueous. I've got uh, 2 OH minus, that's aqueous, uh, and that reacts to form, oh, yeah, uh, Mg2 plus aqueous plus 2 hydroxide aqueous plus 2 NH3 aqueous plus 2 H2O liquid. Notice what cancels, the hydroxides will now cancel for the overall reaction, because they're reacting away. They're being produced and then reacting away. Yeah? Um, so in our H4 plus with hydroxide, shouldn't that go 100% hydroxide and form H2O? Um, sort of. He wants us to go 100%, sort of. Uh, if this was aqueous, that would be true. But this is a, a not a very aqueous compound, and so it's just going forward a little bit. If I'm adding, say, aqueous, so he's wondering why it doesn't go 100%. If I was adding, say, aqueous sodium hydroxide, yes, because that's donating all of its hydroxides. This is just donating very little. So no, it's not going to go forward 100%. Uh, this is just NH4 plus OH, even if you take 1 over KB squared, it's going to be a small number. Okay, so K total equals, since I added two reactions, I multiply the Ks, KSP divided by KB. Question somewhere? I don't see you. Oh, yeah, way in the back, yeah. Can I zoom in? Yes. No problem. Huge. Okay, was there another question? Okay, so what you need to realize is when you add something, uh, I'll, I'll zoom up and I'll go up in just a second. When I add something, in this case an acid, to a solid that has a base as an anion, it'll make it more soluble, uh, and this mess will always occur. We have a second reaction. The first one will be KSP. The second one will have a different K, and then you'll be, want to be able to figure out what the total K is at the end. You could actually now do an ice table with this reaction if you want, uh, and it actually becomes... Oh, about 10,000 times more soluble after adding this acid right there. 
So the acidity just jumps up a lot. Here's a couple examples. So about 10,000 times more soluble in this case. That's why like acid rain uh, can be so devastating. If you take anything, say, made of marble, the acid in the rain will dissolve the marble even more and more. It will become a lot more soluble than it is in normal rain. And so uh, the acid uh, reacts with the anion in marble to make it dissolve here. So kind of following the same kind of concept. Okay. Yes. Say that again. Oh, if you wanted to do more, so if you wanted to solve for the uh, solubility, you would uh, write an ice table under this right here. But I'm just going for the setup. But you could do that for fun. If you do that, I think you'll get an answer of 0 0.18. 0 0.18 molar for the molar solubility. Okay, this is, uh, as you heard from the person who walked out, uh, the hardest and hottest part uh, of the class. Okay, let's continue. So I'll do one more setup at the next lecture on this, so you kind of start to get used to it. But you can watch those YouTube videos as well. Okay, we're going to introduce something that you're really going to take off in, in Chem uh, uh, 2C, uh, this idea of what a complex ion is. Uh, but here we're going to talk about complex ions with regards to uh, solubility and dissolving and things like that. But first of all, what's a complex ion? That's a metal surrounded by Lewis bases. A metal surrounded by Lewis bases is a complex ion. So nickel, NH3, uh, well, let's see, 2 plus, 2 plus. This would be an example of a complex ion. Another example, say, uh, cobalt, hexa aqua, that would be a complex ion. Any metal, transition metal, surrounded by Lewis bases, things with uh, lone pair electrons. Okay? That's a complex ion. Let me write down an example reaction. Say for the cobalt, the cobalt would be cobalt 2 plus plus 6 neutral waters goes to cobalt H2O 6 2 plus. Okay. Here it kind of looks the opposite of a KSP where the complex is written as the product. So the complex ion is the product. You have the transition metal, which is aqueous. You're adding a Lewis base, water in this case, because it has lone pairs, aqueous. And then it's going to an ion, so the ion has to be aqueous as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, water should be a liquid. Thanks. Okay, let's try one more. Uh, let's do nickel. Nickel 2 plus aqueous plus 6 NH3. This is a Lewis base. It's aqueous. And that goes to nickel with 6 ammonia on it. Okay? Oh, and this is aqueous. So typically, in the first example we write, that water would be a liquid. Typically, they're all aqueous. Typically, everything's aqueous if, it, if there wasn't water there. And so now, this has a K that we call KF. That stands for formation of a complex ion. So this is not KF, the formation of a complex ion. It's the pretty much the last K you're going to learn in this class. 
And uh, same thing, products over reactants. And remember, you have to put in the coefficients. And since there was, since there are six ammonias, I have to raise ammonia to the sixth power. Okay, everything else was one, so uh, the complex and the nickels raised to the first power. So I'm expecting, just like in the KSP section, any one of these that we give you, transition metals, you should be able, a transition metal complex, should be able to write this reaction and then write out the KF, okay, for any complex that we would give you. There's all kinds. Let me show you this slide. I'll come back to this one in just a moment. This is from your text. Okay, here's all kinds of complex ions here. They all are, are typically aqueous, even the pox and reactants. And you can see KF is usually extremely large. So the complex wants to form. The favorite side is the products. K will be a huge number. And we'll give you a K on the test, so if you need it for the final, you'll totally have it. So before I do an example problem, I want to draw something just on the bottom here. KQ, just so you get a graphic here, we learned KP and KC. KP had to do with pressure. Kc has to do with concentration. Well, in this, if Kq is like the grandpappy, Kc, a Kp was nerding out too often and writing a segue and could not procreate. But Kc could. Uh, so Kc became Ka, Kb, Kw, uh, Ksp, and Kf. Those are all types of KCs. Ka went on to also make its own case, Ka1, Ka2, Ka3, etc. That happens for a polyproton. Those are all subsets of concentration. Uh, Kf actually does the same. We're not really going to use it, but just so you know, each time, say in the case above, there are six ammonia, each time you put on, uh, one of the ammonias, sometimes they'll just say it's K1, K2, K3, K4, K5, K6, etc. One K for every time you put on ammonia. Usually we're just going to talk about the total K or KF, but just so you know, that's how the family tree looks for Ks. We finally finished the Ks for all that we're going to do. Okay, and this is all on page uh, 107 of the text, of the reader, and the text, this would, they don't have that picture that I just drew, but we're around 751 in the textbook. Yes, oh yes. Oh, yes. oh uh, there's a question here, let me remove this for just a moment. Do we have to draw those lone pairs? Only if you want to. Uh, I drew the lone pairs just to show you that it's a loose space, meaning it could donate it. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. Okay. So here's a typical sort of problem, and you would say, oh, copper, NH3, 4, 2 plus, that's aqueous. How is that formed? Well, that's from Cu2 plus, aqueous, and 4, ammonia. And just for, the, for you in the front, I won't put the lone pair. So this has a KF value, but this is the reaction you'd have to be able to write. 
In this case, they want what's the free, free is sometimes just not bonded. What is the free, not bonded copper 2 plus concentration in, in this solution here? Well, because Kf is so large, again, which side is favored, products or reactants? Products is favored because K is large for all these kinds of solutions. So the amount of this that is going to be available after the reaction is done is very little. So we're expecting an extremely small number for the concentration of copper at the end of the problem. Essentially, what they're asking you for is the equilibrium concentration of copper. Okay, So we want the equilibrium concentration of the copper ion. Let's see what we start off with. 0, 0.0... Uh, oh, okay, I guess I'll write this. I'll write this first, and then 4 more. They are mixed. These two are mixed at equal volumes. Molar. When two things are mixed at equal volumes, what happens to the molarity? Fast. Yeah, if you're mixing two equal volumes, these will now go down to half because you've just doubled the volume. Okay, why did it go down by half? One more time. When I mix two things of equal volume, that means I've doubled the volume. This is 5 liters, this is 5 liters, it comes together at 10. Doubling the volume, half the concentration. Okay? And this is zero. I'm, I want to find the equilibrium concentrations right now. Can I start my ice table? Not quite. What's the problem? I need a zero on the unfavored side, which is this side. We'll have to postpone this for now, and we'll resume at the next class. Okay? Pretty much have finished this chapter, though, so be ready to start the next chapter next week.